on paper. You'd think Janair would have improved by now enough to kind of be back and form from where they were, but this is such a new IM team. We really don't know to expect so much talent on these guys, but can they uh, take this? Can they develop that team synergy quick enough and kind of bring it to wins in champions? Right, and I've never been more excited about an incredible Miracle roster in our many years of casting this team there just hasn't, than I am with about this one. This hasn't really been a reason to be excited about it before now. Coach is entering the booth. And we will see what happens here in Picks and Bands in just a moment. Janair getting ready. Let's see Sweep. Oh, he's in there. All right. Just couldn't see him right at the moment. And there we go. So Janair yeah. will be starting on the blue side this game. Nar ban immediately <laughs> onto Apple. Oh, they watch those promotional matches too, apparently. I was looking at Trace of Solo. Trace always does weird stuff in solo queue. I mean, he's definitely one of the more creative top laners. He's still playing some Morgana in uh, solo queue. Not sure if we're going to see that one come out tonight. So LeBlanc will be banned up against Frozen as well, even though GBM is a perfectly good LeBlanc player himself. So not wanting to first pick that mid lane. So I wonder if the focus is going to be more on the jungle this time for IM. I mean, Chaser was one of the big problem points towards the end of the season. and. You know, by setting him up for a good first pick, maybe they can show that's uh, the case. Well, Bard banned against Sweet. That is unexpected. I, <laughs> I mean, I actually, what's interesting about this is Ignar huh. is actually the one who's been playing a lot of Bard in solo yeah, queue. Yeah, and he's been getting a lot of wins with it, too, if you look at his uh, recent match results. Huh. But uh, they know things we don't know. They've been in scrims that we haven't seen. So apparently Sweet's Bard is uh, something to be afraid of, which makes me very excited. That's the first Bard ban we have ever seen. Well, here we go. Gragas yeah. going to be the final ban right there. So will the Azir be taken first for GBM? GBM very tired, just the, the constant yawning today. I can relate. I've been jet lagged pretty much all week. I know how you feel, GBM. He's like, oh, Azir. I just want to play Zareth over and over again. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Janair and I am worthy. Two main Xerath teams here yep. in Champions. The Xerath War is when they fought. <laughs> as uh, Xerath bouncing back and forth between the two of them. So it will be the Azir first. Now, Frozen does have a lot of options in terms of what he could play into that matchup. Will be the Urgot early pick, actually. Yeah, and they get the uh, Thresh for Ignar, too, which I think is going to be pretty important. So we'll see what Janair has to respond with. Some good top lane and jungle options available to them right now. First time we've seen Urgot be a priority pick in some time. Now, I am did do very well with it, as we saw in some of those clips uh, during the qualifiers. But having that heavy priority on Urgot, usually Urgot is used more as a counter pick these days, like we saw against the Kalista in that last game, yeah. as opposed to being first pick worthy chaser. Hovering over that Nidalee for the time being. Of course, the Sejuani is still available to him should he want hmm. to snap that up. Hecarim could come in here, especially with the Gnar ban. Hecarim becomes a much more attractive option, so you don't get Frozen Mallet Black Cleavered well, Nar like Kuve did in the last game. So yeah, Nar should Sejuani be should be the pickups. And <laughs> Excuse me, they are locked in. Maokai seems like an appropriate response here. And Frozen has been a big Lux player for a long time, but I think that was more a little bit of trolling from GPM than anything. I'd be pretty surprised if the Lux gets picked, but I wouldn't be as surprised by the Ari. I don't know. Frozen will bust out the Lux from time to time, even off meta. We've does, seen that. but still. Uh, could be a mid Kogma here, actually, for some nice poke with that Luden's Echo. Maokai will be locked in for the top lane, so very tanky composition from I oh. They're going to go for Lee Sin. Okay. Wow, so we'll get to see Tucson play some jungle Lee Sin then. Well, they've got hard CC in two lanes right now in the side lane, so there's a lot of opportunity for some early pressure from Lee Sin, especially against a farming jungler like Sejuani. So they, the side lanes from Genera are going to have to play Pretty conservatively, they want to stay alive, and this may, of course, prompt that Ezreal pick up right now just to have a bit more survivability during the laning phase. And sweet grabbing the Janna too wouldn't be uh, bad as well, just to prevent some of that engage. Ooh, but maybe it will be that Alistar. 
I think Alistair Ezreal is about as conservative as you can get here if you're worried about shutting down this Lee Sin and just turtling it out to the late game, and that's what they're going to go with. Yep, so the final pick now over to Longzhu IM. And we'll see what they decide to send in there as Cassiopeia. their mid laner. Okay, yep, Frozen has always been a, a big Cassiopeia player. Even before Cassiopeia became very meta, Frozen was known yeah. as one of the better ones in Korea <laughs> for that. Frozen, Frozen was the king of Victor and Cassiopeia before yeah. that, that meta actually arrived, so it sort of fell right into his lap. He was drawing Cassiopeia bands before anybody was playing Cassiopeia, so right. cool to see him pick that one up. And they needed a high damage mid laner to compensate in the late game for the lack of damage otherwise speaking. So lots of crowd control right now, lots of options for Tucson to make some plays on the map here. We get to see that sort of skill matchup between Azir and Cassiopeia one more time. It's a very interesting matchup in the mid lane as both players trying to zone each other out very actively, one with soldiers, the other one with poison. So it can be fun to take a look at. But this is uh, IM, very nicely balanced composition. They've got some punch in the early game and they certainly can use that to snowball into some heavy, heavy damage and tankiness late. Meanwhile, Jenner going to have an edge in terms of split pushing and some really good poke on sieges as well. So IM may have some problems with wave clear if Jenner starts to group up. Well, we'll see what happens, guys. The game is loading. Jenner, have they fixed the problems that plagued them towards the end of Champion Spring? And does this new roster for IM give them the possibility to make it to the post of the season the first time in a long time? About to find out, guys. It's time to get into game one. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, Jenner versus Longzhu IM. And Gank by Mom bringing the Azir to the mid lane. Just controlling a toke and dancing right now. That's right. Having a dance party with his little sand soldiers. Why not? And some fans of IM and Frozen. The ladies like Frozen's charming good looks. They do. But towards them, he's ice cold. <laughs> well, Who will melt that heart of ice? Well, we'll find out. Not Sejuani, this game at the very least. Nope. Well, <laughs> two tier bottom laners, so this should be a nice slow one of Q poke in the bottom lane. I'm very curious to see how Tusa does. So his first competitive match in the jungle role. Yeah. I think this was such a smart roll swap though. This is one of those few roll swaps that I can really see working out for a team just based on the the, the play style that they had before. And if Ignar can roam as much as Tucson did, uh, IM used to have that great synergy between Wisdom and Tucson and their roaming gank squad of death. Yeah, it's too so bad. So they can kind of go back to that old style, I feel. Well, it's too bad that, uh, you know, that Wisdom ended up having those issues too, because that was, it did seem like it was really starting to work for IM before Wisdom had to take a break, and okay. probably Tucson see. carrying on in his footsteps now. Probably we'll see two or, uh, Wisdom playing on the Tigers soon, I would imagine. So yeah, quite possible. He'll probably get some play time here over the course of the season, so hopefully some of his wrist issues have lightened up a little bit. Yeah, I'd imagine if he's on another team, he's probably Ready to at least practice again. Okay. Oh, Ignar doing some good zoning early on. Gonna get that level two a little bit quicker, it looks like. This is just a very defensive lane from Jenner. Stay out of range, farm with Mystic Shot if you need to, heal up if you happen to get hit by one of those corrosive charges from the Urgot. But just all about playing for that late game and nullifying this Lee Sin pick, which does carry a pretty decent amount of risk in the, in the current meta. We already know what's going to happen, though. They've got giant enemy crab got. They've secured the win. No worries. It's over already, though. Yep. Why Sorry. even play the game? Sorry to disappoint, but giant enemy crab got decides these things. Oops, couldn't quite hit that CS at the back. Gets it anyway. Or watch 
Very boring lane. And oh, there's hook on to Chaser already. Ignar doing some roaming. And there is Tucson. Chaser trying to get away. Had to burn his flash there. So already <laughs> the support jungle duo are making plays. <laughs> Well, uh, that's the danger of playing Sejuani right here, is that you are going to be farming. You are vulnerable to some of these more high damage junglers like Lee Sin. And Ignar finding a cute place to catch out Chaser and already taking his flash away. So that's one less tool they're going to have in these 2v2s if Tucson can find a skirmish right here. And there's a pink ward going to be taken out immediately. Chaser not in a position to Go ahead and take that out and activating the blue buff. So Chaser trying to remain elusive in the jungle right now. But he's going to be a little scared of going to that camp. He does have the scuttle crab at the very least and some decent warding in the river. Yep. And GPM understandably pushed back a little bit early on. But still more or less keeping up in CS. So fairly passive start aside from that little roam from Ignar, but we'll see if maybe uh, IM gets a few more opportunities for that type of thing. Right now with the warding, it's pretty easy for Ignar to just sort of sneak away, you know, pretend that he's going to go ward try and then just slip off to mid lane for a moment. Wow, this lane is really boring. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I don't know why we're watching this lane so much. I mean, Pretty much well, all the lanes are going to be boring. It's if just you look be at a the main map for a while. Let me uh, tell you what we have a choice of watching here right now, Monty. Let me I want to watch Lee Sin. You want to just watch Lee Sin clear jungle camps? Yes. Why is that? I do, because maybe the Lee Sin will do something again. Well, he's back at base now, so so I don't think that's going to happen. All right, Skirmisher Saber into Warrior enchantment. So Lee Sin really looking to get into those back lines to be as disruptive as possible. Trace just going to go ahead and take the Gromp right now with. That Hecarim did get a health crystal first, and now he's going to have that Gromp buff just to be as annoying in lane as he possibly can be. Uh, he's a bit down in CS for the moment, but he should be able to sit in lane and CS a little bit more now, catch up perhaps. Yeah, well, he's also going to win every trade with Maokai with that Gromp buff on, so he does have that advantage going for him as well. True enough. And GBM just farming under turret. And here we go. You know, Ezreal Alistar is really one of the classic League of Legends bot lanes. It's been <laughs> around for a long time. Yes, I, it reminds me of Wung and Mad Life. <laughs> yep. Oh, an early dragon for IM. We'll see if they can sneak this one away. They've got the ward in the back of the pit right now. And they have control over the bottom map. side of the map, as too. So there's not really much, actually, that Janair is going to be able to do about this one. Just a recall coming in from Chaser. They probably have yeah. some idea that this is going on, but there's no way they can skirmish this. And Chaser can't go into that pit without the flash available, so take out that dragon. Yep, I'm starting to feel it. The jungle support synergy, it's coming back. It's Tucson Wisdom 2.0. Tucson and Ignar now. <laughs> They're cops. <laughs> Who's a good cop and bad cop? I feel like Ignar is a bad cop and Tucson's a good cop. Okay. I think I can accept that. Yeah. Ignar is playing the undead character this game. Sure. The soul stealing character, whereas Tucson is the righteous monk. So I think we can go with the good cop, bad cop. Yeah. In that direction. Well, Tucson could be like, you know, I hope, my, I really hope my friend Ignar here doesn't get mad because whatever he does, I can't witness it. <laughs> All right, double tier for Incredible Miracle, though. So it's going to be a while before they can make plays, which means that picking up that early dragon is just even more important because they were unlikely to be able to contest it anyway. So by snagging it, they avoid being in a power trough and trying to fight at that dragon early on. So it's got a nice little bonus right there and something that the Lee Sin makes up, helps make up for, too, the lack of punch until those tiers are fully stacked is Lee Sin's prime time to shine. And so they at least have a well-balanced power curve here, even if that is going to fall off just a little bit. Trace still wow. pretty far behind in terms of CS. I was about to say, Apple gaining a pretty decent lead already. This guy's pretty exciting. Ended up being a pretty good top laner because you just don't see Trace fall behind like that very often. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the Maokai can be decent into the Hecarim, but usually you wouldn't see a lead this big opening up. Yeah. 
exceptionally large. Uh, a little bit of poking onto Pilot. Can't Arcane shift out of the way of the uh, Acid Hunter, can you? I wonder how Reserve Trace has been playing, too, as a result of this Lee Sin pick. He's had pretty good vision. Oh, oh grab onto Pilot, even after the Arcane shift. Yeah, but the thing is, is that Jin Air doesn't have any forward wards. So right now, I, I would imagine Trace is feeling a little bit nervous there. Uh, well, Chaser is level six right now, so he can actually be a lot more effective in ganks. Let's see if he's going to decide to make a play instead. Looks like no plays there. Not standing in a ward. Nope. Just going to back out. Something popped his Raptor buff. Looked like so he's or it ran out. Yep. Oh, they're going to try to make a play on Ignar here. Position reverser. They're actually going to uh, get Sweet away. Oh, nice lantern play. Oh, they grab Sweet anyway. He's tanky, but that's a lot of damage. Wow. Roar and Ignar managing to use the abilities there to stay safe. That, that was, pretty was cool. a really bold bait, actually, considering no they kidding. knew that he was there and their jungler wasn't anywhere nearby. They continue to go on to this one. They tried. Oh, there's a Sejuani out on the Ignar now. I think he's going to go down, but can Ward pick up a kill here? He does on the sweet. Can he get away? No. Two kills for Pilot down the bot lane and a celebration true shot barrage. I don't really know why they would have gone back into that one. Now, they yeah. have the pink ward in the brush. They should have suspected that Chaser was still around, and instead the double kill goes over to Pilot. It was a nice uh, escape, and then they just kind of walked back up to him. Oh, I mean, well. they, they won the trade even in that 2v3, so they had the advantage they needed and then got a little bit greedy, and Ignar, without any kind of flash, walking into that brush with the Alistair in it, and then... Chaser still having his Glacial Prison up. They knew that ultimate hadn't been used on that initial gank, so pretty sloppy, actually, from IM. It's a bit surprising. You know, the interesting thing, though, despite all that, is that if you look at top and mid, IM getting pretty decent CS leads over both of their counterparts on uh, Jin Air. Really yeah, that, the... that top lane is especially troubling, actually. Yeah. The, when a Maokai is going to get this far ahead, you have to be very concerned about how you're going to take him out in the late game. Yeah, because that's just like straight up 1v1. The junglers really haven't been up there very often, so nope. that is just purely Apple no, no outplaying Trace. Yep, no ganks up in that top lane yet. Yeah. So Pilot able to pick up even more sustain right now, too, with that Vamp Scepter off of the two kills that they got. Despite the kills, though, too, uh, I am still ahead in CS down in that bot lane as well. Pretty interesting. Well, I, I mean, you are bullying out with this Urgot and creating some pretty large zones, so I think that's a, that's to be expected to a certain degree. But this 40 CS gap between Trace and Apple is absolutely crazy. Well, it's been continuing to grow. Like last time we checked, it was 10 or it was 20 rather, and then it was 30. Now it's 40. It's very troubling. Yeah, Apple's really running away with the lane at the moment. Tucson, in the meantime. Just kind of doing what he can, taking a moment to farm, probably up to, uh, well, he's six now, I suppose. Or he has surpassed the six mark anyway at this point. Well, they know that this Sejuani is in the bottom side. So Tucson is waiting right now to execute a counter gank in case Sejuani comes in. And Chaser looking to make a play from that brush. Chaser does oh, there have, there's we go. a glacial prison. Flash ult onto Roar, nice knockups. Oh, look at all that damage. Two shot barrage comes through. Somehow he stays tanky enough to survive for a little while, but it's still a kill for Jin Air. That was clean. Whoa, Trace also wrong direction. They still get the kill on the Ignar, though. Tucson has to flash away. A bit of an awkward fight, but Jin Air still comes away with two kills. Yeah, GBM2 had the angle from the mid lane, so there's no help coming from Cassiopeia. Sweet oh, they're going to try to dive. Tower. Yeah, I don't know. Sweet. Just kind of hanging out under tower, I guess. Uh, they want to go for this dragon immediately, so Jin Air going to take the second dragon of the game, but I am. That's the second time that they they know what's coming. They can see what is coming into that lane, and I think they are overestimating their power at this point in time, trying to make some fancy plays right there, but just Chaser with the priority and actually committing. Very, I didn't think they. I don't think they expected Chaser to flash ult like that because he got a lot of damage down before Tucson was able to react from the lane. Yeah. Well, it's a nice little lead early on for Jin because of that. One dragon apiece as well, too. 
Overall, still a close game and, and largely close because of the CS lead on the side of IM. Now the CS lead up in top of 50, about. Yeah, but the big thing is that Trace got a kill right there. So uh, that's sure. going to close that gold gap pretty significantly and was uh, going to be pretty important to how this lane plays out in the future. Pilot also another couple of assists, getting that Bilgewater Cutlass. So he's really safe in terms of being able to continue to stack that tier and play pretty far back. Mm -hmm. So here we go again. Another attempt from Tucson. Yeah, he's waiting. No chaser this time around, though. Oh, there he is. Now he's coming in. Are they going to try this again, though, when they know that Chaser's back and his ultimate is going to be up one more time? No, they're finally just going to back off of that one. Uh, they, this is very weird from IM, just in terms of how much they're committing right now. Chaser getting a whole handful of deep wards alongside Sweet into that bottom side jungle from IM. Not bad. So they're going to see Tucson come through here. That turret's so low. Oh, jugglers find each other. So this is where Jenner can actually, if they can take out this turret in the bottom side, the grouping with Azir is going to be very effective. Again, pretty low wave clear from IM. It's not the worst in the world, but Cassiopeia just taking time because she has that damage over time instead of the instant wave clear. So you can get a couple more shots in on the turret if there's a Cassiopeia defending. And also just the zones that they can create, Jinner can create, are pretty huge with this Azir too. So it will make it hard for Cassiopeia to get close enough without getting poked. And GBM trying to fight back in mid lane and he hasn't really lost any more CS. I mean, he's still about the same behind that he was before. But Traces. they can wait, you know. Taking out this whole jungle right now. Moving from Wolf straight over to that Gromp. Well, that'll help too because his CS number is less, but he's getting minions now that are worth much more than the yeah. average minions yeah. too. Yeah. Especially now that he has the Saber yeah. Oh, GBM trying to make a play into Frozen, but Frozen flashes out of it. Still nice to get a flash right there just for your ultimate. If you're Azir and he's going to have the blue buff transferred over to him immediately after taking out these last couple of minions here. So... I'll be able to give him the blue buff too. Well, I am with the deficit right now with this Lee Sin. Things have not been going their way early Hello. on. Wow. Oh, whoa. Wow, too soon, very slide. low. Getting caught. Yeah, Trace over the wall for an easy kill there. Apple can't save him. Trace just really aware of the opportunities and taking that a good a one there. That was a great all in from Trace. Yeah to take out Tucson and using that challenging smite to get a lot of that true damage. Of course, Tucson still very low in terms of HP, thanks to the fact that he went for that warrior enchantment. Tower falls in the bottom side as Roar and Ignar are forced off the turret due to a recall. And so now this is a great opportunity for Jyn Air just to group up and start sieging. 4-1 split will be extremely effective for them. Yeah, Trace may have been... Trace uh, got a red buff out of that as well. Yeah, and so despite being down in CS by quite a bit, those kills are helping him stay yes. very relevant in this game. Hugely important. It is weird that he got so far behind in the first place, though. And that is kind of strange, yeah. Can't always bank on getting these kills or making these plays onto the enemy jungler. Oh, definitely. Well, he's back again to get more CS after being 67 down at the beginning of that. It's pretty terrible that he's 60 CS down <laughs> at 17 minutes into this game. That is not an acceptable way to lane. Yeah. Well, I mean, you imagine a world in which he wouldn't have gotten those kills, which is quite possible. Yeah. Uh, and suddenly, I am has a big advantage. Got a useless hacker. Yep. And so, dragging up in about a minute. We'll see who can claim it. This would be the second for whoever's able to take it. Well, you're still not very confident in taking this dragon if you're Incredible Miracle. You haven't really scaled all that well yet. Roar does have his Black Cleaver now. So at least has two core items. The Blade of the Ruin King finished for Pilot. And now Jyn Air moving in to the river. 
starting to encroach on IM's territory with a few wards right here. Yeah. Wow, Apple just keeps getting more CS. He's going to be huge, too. This is certainly a bit of a cause for concern, I think, in the later stages of the game. Here we go. Chaser and Sweet really want to hand this blue buff over to Pilot for better poke. And wow. they're going to get it. That is really important because having a blue buff onto Ezreal at this timing for a siege is very nice for them, even though this Ezreal doesn't have that sheen, so he's not going to hit quite as hard or be able to take out turrets nearly as quickly. It seems like a pretty large error for IM to let that happen. Jin Air waiting to see if they can bait the fight. Here we go. Flash Pulverize actually on the Ignar. They're going to come through. True Shot Barrage used again. That's a lot of damage on the Thresh. Not quite enough to finish him off because of that shield. He's got the safeguard as well, too. But Jin Air has successfully pushed back IM, especially their support. So they might be able to get the Dragon. Never mind. GBM making a play on the Tucson here. Over the wall, trying to get that kill. Looks like he'll be able to just barely grab it. And so a near kill followed by an actual kill. I like Jin actual kills. Great play by GBM, though. Yeah. Onto this Lee Sin, that highly mobile champion, able to corner him and shove him back into the team and then finish it up with a flash. Just well executed mechanically. And GBM continues to show so many, so much mastery on, on such a huge champion pool. Yeah. This guy can play absolutely anything in the meta, it seems. When his team needs him to pick up a champion, he's always been there this year. And it's so strange, too, because GBM historically has been that player with a bunch of weird pocket picks like Heimerdinger and Morgana mid and seemingly unable to play a wide variety of champions. And then yeah. in 2015, he shows up with <laughs> a much larger box, uh, box of tools to work with out of the mid lane. And look at that. They just showed us that despite being 70 CS down, Trace is actually 100 gold ahead of Apple right now <laughs> because of the kills, because of other things. Yeah, the turret. Yeah, Trace is able to actually uh, main, not only maintain, but exceed, which is pretty amazing. You wouldn't expect to see that looking at the CS. Well, also those jungle camps are just worth so much money to exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. So. That's really the, the biggest part, I think. That and the kills. He's been certainly farming a lot of the jungle this game. Yep. And there's True Shot Barrage to clear out this wave on the opposite side of the map. Here it comes. Not quite soon enough, though. Oh, look out. Oh, oh barely too late. Well, oh, they would have probably finished off either way, I suppose. All right, they're going to try and dive right here, Apple. So Chaser already there. Twisted Advance coming in. Sweet's wow. going to punt him backwards. This is dedication, man. Yeah, the Pulp Rise, the headbutt, and Pilot coming in to add on more damage. Even GBM joining in. Apple right now, the strongest member probably of uh, IM, and so a good target for Jin Air yeah. to get a bit more position in this game. Already finishing up his Frozen Heart, however. Chaser trying to save his ultimate, forced to use it in the end to help secure that kill. Uh, GBM with a nice Azir roam after pushing up that mid lane. They're going to go ahead and take away the red buff if they can at the same time. It does go over to Tucson, who snags it with a smite. Chaser's... Not quite able to pick that one up, Whoa, and GBM, GBM somehow died to Frozen. Yeah, I guess there was a 1v1 there. Ooh, that was a good read, actually. Where's the body? <laughs> I don't even know where he died. We'll have to see a replay of that one. GBM, I don't recall being too low on health after that. Let's find out. Yeah, full health. Frozen just over the wall. With that ultimate and GBM just not able to make it out. That was a cool all-in from Frozen. Yeah. But that, I mean, you have to be careful right there. If you don't have a pink ward, you should know that there's probably going to be a ward and that there is a chance that Frozen's just going to pop over. He knows your flash is down. So playing a bit risky there, G GBM, a little bit greedy, coming back in the lane off of that roam. And he gets punished for it, but... It's a nice way for Frozen to sort of get back into this game. I mean, I am definitely isn't out of this yet. They're only 2K gold down or so because of the farm advantage that they've managed to accrue in all three lanes. So it's actually minimizing the fact that they are five kills down at this point, and they got the first dragon as well. So still going to be hard for them to win because of this Lee Sin and how strong Janair's composition is in the late game, but definitely... I am still can make a match of it. Yeah. And we'll 
see what their plan is for that. Right now, the plan is just to get back a little bit of vision control throughout their side of the jungle. Janeiro has been in there for a while now. So they're about to hit a big power spike when these tiers are completed also, because they have two tiers, so they're gonna have a Muramana and that Seraph's Embrace. So in spite of that gold differential, we should be just about even when those items get finished. Oh, he did not see that one ward, it looks like. So at least I am with some vision anyway, as they try to protect their blue buff. We'll see if they can. Looks like for now, Janeiro's pushed back, but I am needs to be careful. If anyone gets poked down, Dragon's coming up soon. And you don't want to be in that situation. Uh, took a lot of poke damage there from Ezreal, Malut, and Zeko, however. Tucson yeah. hopping out on the lantern, but blue buff. Who got Ooh, it? I think GBM got that, GBM actually. Must have yeah, it. they were able to steal the blue. Wow, I wonder if that was like a Luden's proc or something. Frozen may have gotten it too. That was interesting. It's, it's hard to tell actually where that blue buff went. Uh, I think Frozen got it. Did he? I didn't see it on him. We'll see. We'll scroll back up. Don't worry. We'll see it sometime. The world may never know. Actually, somebody probably knows who is watching more carefully than we were, but. Someone. The players probably know. Who knows? Not us. Pretty much. Dragging up in 45. Oh, yeah, there's a blue buff, uh, blue buff onto Frozen. But is it an old buff or a new buff? So, looks like Trace actually going to be the first Hecarim tonight to not build the Trinity Force right after finishing up. And in this particular scenario, I think that makes sense. He really just needs to get tanky right now. There's a lot of damage that's going to be coming in off of Azir anyway. And he doesn't necessarily need to one-shot the Cassiopeia right here, and he's certainly not going to one-shot the Urgot. And, yeah. of course, Urgot a great counterpick to Hecarim in general, just because, as we saw, CJ do it probably best in space on that Urgot. As it, when the Hecarim comes in for the flank, with that home guard, you could just immediately <laughs> ult him. You just grab him. Yep. Just grab him right away. And make sure corral he, that horse. Just, you know, slip the halter onto him. Wrangle it. Perhaps. Gotta, gotta wrangle it. Continuing with our earlier theme. Urgot is a horse wrangler of League of Legends, I guess. He is now a, we know. He's a pretty damn good horse wrangler. So yeah, you just cut so much of his damage. Oh, close call. Because of his passive and the fact that he gets to... Oh. Oh, well, here we go. A little bit of damage onto Tucson. And I am needs to be careful that they don't get poked off of this dragon recalling right now trying to set up for this fight they want to use that home guard if they are able pilot feverishly clearing out minions in the mid lane yeah looks like dragon's going to be activated by i am anyway scrying orb used there's a teleport coming in apple there to defend his team but hecarim coming from the side true shot barrage not doing a lot there's immediately that position reverser on the hecarim just like we talked about he's going to ult back over and that's still a lot of damage on the i am they're going to get pushed back anyway Jin Air not interested in fighting too much, it looks like. They'll just back off, see if they can maybe get into a position to take the dragon. GBM is going to go ahead and wake it up. He's the dragon regular this game. No, they really just want to push mid right now, actually, and continue to poke I am off of this objective. I mean, yeah, Tucson is going to have to go back. It's a large minion wave developed at the tier two, but it doesn't look like that's actually going to be able to kill the turret in the end. Jin Air still a little bit shy. Whoop about taking this dragon it will re-leash right there and yeah, sort of gonna, awkwardly uh, flap at the mouth of the pit he's Go just gonna hang out outside the pit all right he's moved dragon is tired finally i'm like when is he gonna get tired of being in that pit i agree with the dragon completely what's going on he's fucked out right he's, now. oh he's stuck <laughs> like oh look, i can make it okay there i am has freed the dragon they are the mother of dragons Wow, so they're just going to give that up. Even wow. though they had control over the crab okay. and the speed shrine, they didn't want to commit to that fight. A lot of ultimates were already down for them, but I think they could have just continued poking. Tucson did have to go back to base and then return during that time period, but uh, they were afraid of that minion wave going to waste on the bottom side. So instead, they take out the mid turret, go for the minion wave instead, say, we'll get the next one. It's two to two in terms of dragons anyway, so yeah. there's not really a big timer. Jinair so like, wants that gold immediately, as opposed to playing the dragon game. The dragon appear. was uh, acting kind of weird too. It was it was <laughs> suspicious. You know, I don't know if I'd want to get too close to that dragon. 
It's a definitely tricky. Yeah. The river Dragon. He's like, I have to defend this Rift Scuttler. He's been through too much. Wow, Pilot actually going for the Iceborne Gauntlet. So Jinair really committing to just being able to kite this Cassiopeia. Yeah, I think that's smart. Same thing I suppose you could say to a lesser extent with the Urgot as well too, chasing you with the uh, Acid Seeker. Yeah, also, I mean, just more armor to deal with the Urgot anyway. Yeah. So it's uh, definitely an item we don't see very often on Ezreal, but if played right, it now, we know Pilot's a much more reserved AD carry. He really likes just standing in the back with these caster carries. He likes his Corky. He likes his Ezreal. Just sit there and hit you with mystic shots or rockets all day is really the way he likes to play the game. True enough. I am trying to defend the incursion to their jungle for uh, Jyn Air right now. I love how I, uh, Jyn Air has actually figured out a way as they sneak this Baron right now. It will be discovered. They're going to have to back off a bit, but cute little attempt. Jyn Air has figured out a way to play this disengage poke composition pretty well in the Cinder Hulk meta, and they should count themselves lucky <laughs> that there isn't a very strong engaged jungler on the other side yeah. because I feel like the Lee Sin pick is actually helping them out quite a bit. Here, if there were the Sejuani was on the other team, they would have a lot more problems in terms of trying to execute this. We're just going to sit here and poke you composition. Well, it's working this game, but is this the type of thing you can really carry into other teams, other compositions? It's just kind of an inefficient way to play the current meta uh, when you have all of these junglers like Gragas and Sejuani that have such strong engage tools. Yeah. Playing poke just doesn't do them a lot of service when you get all in and can be much stronger off of that big AOE CC. I suppose it's USS. <laughs> Holy cow, Pilot, this is the most it's defensive. Okay, he's got a Blade of the Ruin King to self peel. He has a QSS to get rid of the Urgot ultimate now, and he has an Iceborne Gauntlet. This guy, this is the ultimate safety build onto Ezreal. He does not want to die. If there was like an armor that was just made of pillows that you duct tape to yourself, he would buy that too. The only thing he needs right now is to have, what, sixth item by a GA? That would be pretty crazy. Banshee's Veil too? Yeah, I hope he does Sell do his that. boots for Banshee's Veil? <laughs> <laughs> no, he definitely needs more damage. Oh, oh, Chaser, kick back. Tucson trying to escape out of this one. Roar there already though. As is Frozen. Interesting moment there, but Jynair pushed back. Well, they have sufficient wards around there, trying to get a few more in around the red buff, but do get punished for it a little bit. Chaser has to recall. The GBM continues just to defend this pink ward right behind the red buff. True enough. Sweet's like, I don't want to take it. Just going to hang out. All right, so we're trying to create a pick around this Baron once again. Sweet's still there. They're not going to be able to get it as GBM easily clear out that ward. Oh, wow, too sick. Oh, here we go. Sweet actually going in deep. Chaser following two shot barrage comes through, but here comes the teleport for IM. Canceled, though. Doesn't look like they're going to turn that one around. Apple just walking back through the base now, and Jynair starting that Baron. Can Chaser zone well enough? We'll see. He might be able to throw the ult in as well. Yeah, there it is onto Roar. Nice oh. knockup from Sweet. Oh, man. And GBM in with the Emperor's Divide. And IM just gets annihilated on the run already. GBM slowed down quite a bit. And Frozen backing away safely. But kills come in for Jin Air across the board. And this could lead to a very easy Baron now. Yeah. Now they're going to be able to take it. Wow. It's going to be a bit slow. Uh, just because of their itemizations here. But there's not really anybody who can steal it unless we're talking about a miracle coming in from Apple. And there it nope. is, wrapped up by Chaser. Chaser's doing a much better job of engaging than he normally does this game. That was a great ultimate to set up that fight. And then the combo coming in with Onslaught of Shadows and Embers Divide too, just wrecking incredible miracle. Didn't really have any time at all to respond during oh, that engagement. Roar like walked right up to the enemy team too. Look at this. He's right up there with Frozen. You don't want your carries they in front knew, like that. They know there's a pink ward in that brush too. That was a I super know. awkward play from Incredible Miracle. That it's was like, a puzzling decision. I have has made some weird decisions this game overall. With th they have information, but they're not really 
acting on it. I mean, they yep. knew Chaser was around in that bottom lane when they lost some of those uh, attempted counter ganks as I, well. I think maybe they thought whoever they found there, they could hit him with either the Cassiopeia or the Urgot ult to get a pick maybe. Oh, meanwhile, some more action in the mid lane. Apple trying to go in and disrupt the back lines for now. They are going to push back Jin Air for the moment anyway. Tucson trying to get forward. Maybe a bit of a flank. Nope, he has to go around the side. Oh, they dodged the ult. Roar immediately getting wrapped up. Apple trying to get in the back lines. Oh, True Shot Barrage comes through, but a kill for GBM helps out. Roar is still alive. There we go, finally going down. Trace gets hit with the Cassiopeia ultimate. There's a kill finally for Frozen, but double for GBM. Triple, actually. Oh, no, I think, he, uh, I think it was just a double, yeah. Yeah, Pilot got that one. Pilot shutting out down. They're going to get the turret as well. And they're going to get much more than that. Still Baron empowered minions here pushing all the way through. I thought it was a good dodge by uh, Roar of that ult from Chaser, but they were just ready to pick him up immediately with that. And Roar just isn't all that tanky this game. And Jin Air not having any trouble at all bursting him down, it seems like. Yeah, he hasn't gotten that Frozen Heart yet. He was going for that armor penetration first. He opted to go for the Black Cleaver before he finished the Frozen Heart. So yeah, he's not that tanky, particularly against the magic damage that GBM is dishing out in spades. Another Dragon, third of the game for Jin Air and Chaser going to save that turret in conjunction with the True Shot Barrage from Pilot. Pilot, who's been part of nearly every kill this game so far and yet to die. So this very conservative take on the Cinder Hulk meta that Jyn Air is playing seems to be working out. Yeah. yeah they're not just uh, playing super defensively as well. They're the ones who've been engaging these fights too. But, you know, I am has given them a lot of fights, though. GBM just bought a soul stealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this oh, is, GBM. This is GBM. Damn, he was 5 1 and 5. You can't blame the guy. <laughs> Why not? But yeah, I feel like IM has really kind of given Janair a lot of really good opportunities this game as far as team fights go. They're sort of handing themselves to Janair on a silver platter with some of their positioning. I think they're just trying to be overly tricky. Mm. That's. Oh, Apple, can they get a kill here? More true shot barrage damage coming through as Apple tries to stay alive. Looks like it might be enough. Ooh, Trace, or Tucson rather, tries to come in but gets knocked back immediately by that Emperor's Divide. He tried to get in behind GBM, but it just didn't work at all. And it just seems like everything IM tries to do is not working this game. I like how aggressively Jyn is closing this out, though. They have yeah. the tankiness to go ahead and dive these turrets. Chaser finally looking more confident on a Cinder Hulk jungler instead of simply uh, kind of running away from the team fights like he was, unfortunately, in the second round Robin there. Oh, they're going to get the inhibitor, and they're going to get the bottom tier two turret as well. So that was what, like two, three turrets and an inhibitor out of that? Yeah, and I am, uh, to talk, to recap this game, I mean, a little bit, they were actually doing quite well during that laning phase, of course, all of their lanes ahead in farm, but it was some weird decisions on when to all in, and I think attempting to bait Jin Air in without the immediate response from the jungle or ignoring the fact that they knew where Chaser was and still just trying to win some of these skirmishes and it, it just didn't work out for them. I think you said it well when you said they're being a little bit too tricky for their own good. You know, if they had sort of continued to play the straight up game that had gotten them sort of that little edge in terms of CS, you'd think they could have probably at least stayed much closer. Yeah. I agree, and they, they were trying to react, too, to what Chaser was doing instead of putting down pressure with Tucson. Yeah. And now that we're in the late game, and there's a 0-4-1 Lee Sin in the Cinder Hulk meta with a Warrior in Chan, I mean, he's just going to die. It's not good. Whoa, Tucson getting over the wall with that safeguard and pilot. Can't quite pick up the kill. And there's basically nothing he can do. Yeah. Pretty much. And full tank Hecarim here. There's, there's simply insufficient damage from Incredible Miracle to actually take out the Hecarim at this point in time. I mean, he's got Warmog's Frozen Heart and Spirit. Oh, grab down. on the Chaser. I am trying to make a play here, but here comes Sweet. Get that Headbutt Pulverize to try to keep things safe. They did get the kill on the Chaser, though. So a little win for IM as they try to defend their base. Uh, Trace still pushing up at that mid lane. Bit awkward for a Chaser to be so far forward, but nice pick from Incredible Miracle. Now, can they actually hold on to this turret? They've sent Maokai back to deal with these super minions, but I don't think he's gonna be enough by himself. Yeah, it's unclear to see just how well I am is gonna be able to stop Jyn from coming in here. 
the 4v5 is not a problem for Jeanette right now. No, they have so much zone control as well. You see these sand soldiers still right. just keeping people from defending the turret or defending these minion waves. Now, Maokai was able to take out enough of these super minions to contain the threat onto the bottom tower, at least for now. Chaser back up, but a long, long way from being part of this fight. Pilot just trying to poke as best he can with the mystic shots. And it seems to be enough. You know, they're whittling down the turret. It's a little bit under half health right now. I am really in dire straits at the moment. Some objectives coming up pretty soon. So we'll see how aggressively Janair wants to push this. They could just easily back off. Pilot dancing. It's easy to dance in the back lines like that, Pilot. Dance in the front lines and then see how things go. There we go. There's the turret. Oh, nice knockout by Sweet yet again. And man, all the damage coming through means that it's going to be a quick fight for Jin here as they take out I am Another double kill coming in for Gank by Mom. And they're going to push them all the way back to Fountain. Yeah, Roar and Ignar. I've never seen an Urgot get blown up as fast as I have this game. It's really been something else. Uh, Apple trying to get back onto uh, Jin here, but I just don't know what it's going to accomplish here. Emperor's oh, wow. Divide. GBM getting around to push them back away from the Fountain. And pretty much an ace. I mean, Apple's still up, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus going down. Pilot wants that ace. Maokai's fairly tanky. Oh, Mystic Shot. Dodge. Twisted Advance comes in. <laughs> he gets the heal. Oh, and the game ends before Pilot gets it. Jin Air. I bet he's happy either way. There's a GG. And a pretty one-sided game. A bit more one-sided than I expected, actually. Violet having a chuckle after that, thinking that his teammates should have actually tried to wait right there. They actually were waiting. The minions killed it. They were trying yeah. to delay as long <laughs> as possible, but they couldn't.